Hi, I'm Joe James. This video is going to show how big O notation is used to analyze algorithms. First, the definition of complexity is defined as the time required by an algorithm. And we measure that in the number of operations relative to the input size. For the analysis of algorithms using big O, we ignore the speed of the computer. Big O notation is used to show the complexity or the speed of an algorithm. So for example, we have an algorithm that's actually a single line of code only. Print hello world. So it's only one statement. There's only one line of execution. This algorithm is big O of one. Now let's say for instance you shake hands with your professor. Again, there's only one event, so this is big O of one. You shake hands with every other student in the class. Let's say there are n students in the class. You shake hands with each one of them. That's big O of n, because there are n events. Now if your professor greets the class, he says, good morning class. That is a big O of one event, because it's a single event. Now the professor calls roll. He calls out each student's name in the class, and each student answers here. That's big O of n, because there are n students in the class, and he has to call out n names. Every student in the class shakes hands with every other student in the class. Well, there are n students in the class, so there are going to be roughly n squared handshakes. So this is big O of n squared. So now hopefully you have some idea of what big O is. Here's a formal definition of big O. The function f of n is big O of g of n if there exists some n naught greater than zero and some constant c such that for all values of n greater than n naught, f of n is less than this constant times g of n. And that may sound confusing, but I'm going to explain it in a little more detail with some pictures, so hold on. g of n is an upper bound on f of n for all large values of n. So that may make it a little easier to understand. Let's look at a typical function f of n here. So we have on the vertical axis the number of operations, right, which is the relative time that this algorithm takes, and the input size. So as the input size increases, we can see that it takes more time. This is our growth function of how the number of operations increases with the input size. Now we'll draw g of n, which is an upper bound on f of n. You can see that g of n, beyond this point, stays above f of n, regardless of how big the input size grows. So we could say that f of n is upper bounded by g of n beyond this point. This is why we use n naught, because we don't care about small values of n. We only care about very large values of n, and where the function grows farther out. So as long as f of n stays within this pink zone, then it is upper bounded by g of n. So some common growth rates, you can see the size of input on the side here, 10, 100, 1,000, up to 1 million. If an algorithm runs in log n efficiency, for an input size of 10, then there are only three operations. Up to a size of 1 million, still only 20 operations. So log n algorithms are extremely fast. Big O of n operations means that you're roughly going to have the same number of operations in the algorithm as you have input size. In other words, one operation per value input. You can see that the algorithm efficiency gets slower as we move to the right. A big O of 2 to the n is an extremely slow algorithm. So slow, in fact, that if you input only 100 values, it takes 10 to the 30th execution lines. So it's going to be extremely slow, and for bigger data, it's simply never going to run. So here we can see some popular algorithms. Binary search runs in log of n, which makes it very, very fast. If you want to iterate an array, you have to look at each item in the array one at a time. So that is big O of n. Merge sort and the average or expected speed of quick sort are big O of n log n sorting algorithms. So you can see as the input size grows to 1 million, the lines of execution is roughly 20 million, or on the order of 20 million. And bubble sort and insertion sort are big O of n squared algorithms. So you can see how the number of operations grows with the input size. 
So just to map out on a graph how some of these, uh, these growth functions look on a graph, the first one we looked at actually is a log n curve, which grows very slowly. An n squared function grows very quickly, and n is just a linear growth path. So let's apply big O analysis to some simple programs. If we look at a for loop that runs from 1 to n, the print statement will execute n times, once for each number in the for loop. So the complexity of this algorithm is big O of n. So if we change the same for loop, so that it actually executes three lines of code each time it cycles through the for loop. Does this become a big O of 3n algorithm? No, because we ignore constants in big O analysis. So the complexity is still big O of n. We cycle through the loop n times, it's a big O of n algorithm. Now if we have nested for loops, for x equals 1 to n and for y equals 1 to n, and then we execute one line of code inside the inner for loop, we can see that this is nested for loops and it's going to execute n squared times. So this is a big O of n squared algorithm. That wraps up our introduction to big O analysis. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.